Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Robert Chapo, executive editor of Madison 365, with your daily update for Thursday, sorry, Wednesday, September 9th. Uh, support for the daily update today and for Madison 365 comes from Milwaukee Film, presenting the Minority Health Film Festival, taking place virtually starting tomorrow, September 10th through the 24th. Information available now at mkefilm.org slash mhff thank you to milwaukee film for the partnership uh, to promote your uh the, the film festival um today we're going to have a, a brief update um a little bit early today uh, as i have class at 3 30 so i gotta um via zoom of course um so i gotta get ready for that but um today the news again uh continues to be not Great. Um, we did have a slightly higher, uh, well, a lot higher testing today. 8,900 tests processed. Um, 857 of those tests were positive. So that puts us at 9.7% for the day, which, as you know, uh, if you've been paying attention at all to my updates every day, uh, 10% is about, uh, 10% is where I start to panic a little bit. So 9.7%, not great. Uh, it is our first day, though, since September 3rd um, that we are under 10%, just barely under 10%. But more importantly than even a single day uh, is the seven-day and the 14-day trend, right? The seven, our seven-day percentage right now is still 12%, which is basically unchanged since yesterday. The 14-day rate is up slightly to 10.55%. So even though today is a little bit better than it was yesterday and the day before, um, overall, we're still in pretty bad shape in terms of the positive test rate uh, over the past couple weeks. Uh, total number of cases now is 83,334. Of those, about 8,100 are considered active, which is about the same as it was yesterday. Um now I will have uh, a little bit of time for questions at the end of this. So if you want to, if you have questions about the data today, um, go ahead and drop them in the comments there. Um, I'm going to go through a few more numbers, and then we'll talk a little bit about um, local uh, stuff in Dane County here, and then a couple other news items I'll mention. Um, <clears throat> we did have 16 new deaths today, and I mentioned this yesterday that we had uh, three or four maybe even five days there, we, we didn't have any deaths reported because uh, fatalities we're finding out take up to a week after someone passes away to make their way into the data. So I was a little bit concerned that seeing three, four, five days with no fatalities reported that we'd get a big number all at once. 16 is a big number. It's not, I was worried that it might be like 20 or something, but it's not that, so that's good. So 16 new deaths today, not good. Um, better than it is, let's let say it's less bad than I feared it might be. 16 deaths in a day is still bad. Five of those are in Milwaukee County. Two are in Outagamie County. And then there's one death in each of Dane, Grant, Oconto, Racine, Rock, Sawyer County, Sheboygan County, Washington, and Winnebago Counties. We also had one death that was previously reported in Kenosha County that was taken out of the data. It was just a, an error or an overcount or something. Uh, so that our death toll actually went up by 15, even though we had 16 deaths. So the total death toll is now 1,183. Uh, that puts our deaths per day over the past week at 5.85 and uh, 5.5 for the past two weeks. Um couple of localities to mention. Uh, Brown County is the highest today. I don't know what's going on up there. Um, I might make a, if this, if this continues, I might make a call tomorrow up to Green Bay and see what's happening. But 175 new cases in Brown County today, which is, Brown County has actually been a lot better than that recently. Remember they had that big, big outbreak in May where there were triple digits every day. And they've been much better since then, but 175 new cases today, 57% positive tests. It's possible that that's kind of a catch-up number, that there was, uh, they, have, they had a bunch of um, results that didn't get 
reported over the holiday weekend. And so that's kind of a catch up. So tomorrow we'll be back to normal. But for now, they have 175 cases in Brown County that we didn't know about yesterday. So that raises the eyebrows a little bit. Dane County today is 62 new cases, of which about a third are from the University of Wisconsin. 5.6% uh, positive test in Dane County is not terrible. It's much higher than it has been in Dane County. Dane County has been in, you know, for a while, it was in like the 2 and 3% range, but so not great. Um, Dodge County, 54 new cases, 32% positive, 31, I'm sorry. Uh, Eau Claire County, this is another might be a data anomaly, 37 cases, 86% positive. Um, Portage County, 20 cases, 33% positive. So 20 positive tests out of 60 total tests. Um, the, the rest are kind of be, between the 15 and 20% range, which is very high. Um, one that I want to call out, Waukesha County, 13 new cases today and only 1.4% positive tests. Yesterday, Waukesha County was 100% positive tests. So for it to go from 100 down to 1.4 uh, makes me really suspect that what I said yesterday is true, that it was it, yesterday's 100% number was just that there it, it was a whole bunch of negative tests that didn't get reported yesterday. So you had a lot of positive tests yesterday, but no negative tests. So And today you have 13 new positive tests and then like basically two days worth of negative tests which drives the percentage down in Waukesha County. I don't think that that would be enough tests to meaningfully impact the statewide percentages such that, you know, yesterday, the 17%, if Waukesha had fully reported all of its negative tests, I don't think that would have gone down very much. But it definitely affected at least the local number there in Waukesha County. Uh, so that's good to see uh, that that, that it wasn't quite as bad as we thought yesterday. Uh, talk a little bit about hospitalizations. Um, hospitalizations get updated now at 3.30 p.m., so we don't have today's hospitalization data yet. We do have yesterday's, which um, it did go up yesterday slightly to 297, which is eight more than Monday and two more than a week ago. So not, not too bad there in hospitalizations. 88 were in intensive care units, which is three fewer than Monday. So that's not too bad either. Um, let's take a look. I have not, to be honest, taken a look at the rate of transmission today. So let's take a look at that. We'll learn it together. Uh, Wisconsin. Ooh. Ooh. This is not good, you guys. 1.22. Um, again, this is... Um, what that means is every person who is infected, on average, will pass the virus on to 1.22 other people. You can't pass it to a half... A, a, 20% of a person. So that's an average. That's a statistical average. And what that means is basically, and again, th that number is pre is not predictive. It's not telling us what the future holds. It tells us what has been happening over the past week. It tells us where we're at right now, basically. Uh, and so that does make sense that after this past week where we've been in the you know, 12, 13, 17% range of positive tests, we've been high on the number of cases. Uh, it does make sense that our rate of transmission would will have been a little bit higher during that period of time. Uh, 1.22 means that every 100 people who have the virus will pass it on to 122 other people. So each round of infection will be larger than the previous round by 22%. That number 1.22, again, that's the current, what's happening currently, that's not necessarily what's going to be tomorrow. It uh, doesn't necessarily predict the future, but that number right now is the second highest in the United States. West Virginia is 1.35, and we're 1.22, and then North Dakota is 1.18. Those are the top three. So that's not good at all. Uh, one other thing to mention, coronavirus-related, um, Public Health Madison Dane County said today, uh, it's hard to tell if there's actual tension between Public Health Madison Dane County and the University of Wisconsin or not. Because, uh, you know, University of Wisconsin, they're, they're, they say they're working together to try to solve whatever's happening on the UW campus. Um, which I think a lot of people were cautiously optimistic that UW could return and start classes and it would be okay. And that has not turned out to be the case at all. And uh, Public Health Madison Day County keeps kind of mentioning how many of their cases are UW-related. And today, Public Health Madison Day County said, if you live or work downtown, 
monitor yourself for symptoms because you should just assume you've been exposed. Um, which is, you know, they're not, it's basically saying everybody who lives and works on the isthmus in Madison has, should assume they've been exposed. So do they close any businesses? No. Do they change any orders or rules uh, related to downtown Madison? No. They just say, Meh. you probably got it. So keep, take care of yourself, which is, I'm not sure that's the best stance. Um, but who am I to say what public health Madison Day County should do? I don't, I, I'm not here to criticize necessarily. It's just surprising that they would declare that everyone downtown should assume they have been exposed and not actually do anything about it other than say you've been exposed. So monitor yourself. Um, seems like other measures could be taken. Uh, and again, I don't mean to be, if anybody from PHMDC is watching, uh, I trust that you know what you're doing. It just seems strange to me. Um, so that's the coronavirus news for today. Uh, a couple of other things I'll mention. Uh, the feature story this morning is one I would definitely recommend to you. Uh, Everett Mitchell, the pastor, uh, is an attorney. He was, uh, he was the director of community relations at University of Wisconsin for a while. Uh, that's how I first got to know him. Um, that's the job he had when Madison 365 started five years ago a couple years ago well, four years ago now 2016 already four years already he ran for um, judge and he's now uh, he was elected to that position as a Dane County Circuit Court judge in the juvenile division and uh, his approach has always been a restorative one meaning he's not there to punish children even though they've done something wrong like somebody comes before him, they're at least accused of doing something wrong. And in many cases, they have done something wrong. Uh, but he's not there to throw them away. He's there to redirect their life to help them not do things wrong in the future. And that's the approach he takes. And he takes a very trauma-informed approach. Like if you're, if you're coming before the juvenile court, something has gone wrong in your life probably, and let's see how we can fix it. That's just the way he approaches it. And he is now, four years later the presiding judge in the juvenile division. So he spoke with our uh, editor, Dave Dahmer, um, about sort of his approach to the judiciary and uh, to the law enforcement and uh, and and sort of the, uh, reflecting on his four years on the bench and what he hopes to do as the presiding judge because he kind of gets to set the vision for the department, for the whole, the whole juvenile justice system in Dane County. And given his sort of unique take on it, I think that um, is kind of an important moment for this area. So, um, and I would also commend you to listen to the Black Oxygen interview with him. It is just, I'm a podcast person. I listen to podcasts all day, every day. So one particular podcast it doesn't really jump out usually. And I very rarely go back and listen to a podcast twice. But this one I did because it is, a really stunning interview and you really have to pay attention to it, but go to madison365.org slash black oxygen. Listen to the Everett Mitchell interview. I highly recommend it. Um, and then read that story. Um, this, on this madison365.org from this morning. Um, tomorrow, uh, we'll have, uh, more news. We'll have some news from the Milwaukee film festival, uh, or, or rather the minority health film festival, which is, uh, presented by, Milwaukee Film. We're very proud to be a partner on that and uh, helping uh, promote uh, and get some more eyeballs to that. Uh, Milwaukee, the Minority Health Film Festival, which is important. And finally, one last thing on the Wisconsin Leadership Summit. Uh, happy to announce that uh, Dr. Gloria Ladson Billings, who is a an internationally renowned expert on pedagogy and education, uh, was a, on the faculty at University of Wisconsin School of Education for 26 years. Again, you know, just nationally and internationally known for theories on and for her expertise on um, education, especially of children of color, especially of children who've dealt with trauma, uh, race in education, racism in education, uh, all just, just a brilliant person. And we're very excited that she's agreed to moderate a panel at the Wisconsin Leadership Summit on um, pandemic protest and pedagogy, making space for the movement. So it's it's this, you know, how are young people coping with this particular moment? This really weird, like dual pandemic thing we have going on, and um, 
and then how educators and education systems can make room for that movement also. Um, so that'll be a really interesting conversation. Um, and uh, you can register for the Wisconsin Leadership Summit now at um, wisconsinleadershipsummit.com and just click on the registration link. It's $79 for the whole week. Uh, we, we just, um, we're going to put up the, we're just like just two hours ago, we had a meeting to finalize the schedule. So we'll be posting the schedule tomorrow morning. So we'll look for that. Um, and uh, I think uh, that's all I have for today. I see a couple of comments. Thank you for those. I don't see any questions to answer. So if you do have questions later, I know this is this um, update has been brief. So if you do have any questions later, feel free to put them in the comments and I will come back and just uh, I can answer as much as I can in comments. Uh, appreciate your attention. Uh, thanks for being with me and uh, enjoy your afternoon and we'll see you again tomorrow.